God bless you, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus, our risen Savior. Suddenly we praise God for another day, another week that he blessed us. And certainly, I always say, if you got any good sense, you'll tell the Lord, thank you. Uh, to all of our new Hopians and to all of our friends and family that shares with us uh, during this uh, hour each week, we're certainly, certainly appreciative of you. And, and uh, you know my normal routine, won't you just take a quick moment out uh, to call or text or inbox a uh, family member, church member, and let them know that this the weekly um, broadcast ministry here of the Bible study uh, at the New Hope Church that it would do them good, not only today, but in the days to come. Certainly our prayers goes out to all of our uh, members and friends and family and the community and our church, uh, those who are dealing with seasonal sickness and those who are going through seasonal bereavement, and certainly we praying for you, praying for our world and country. We know there's wars and rumors of wars, wars in foreign land, even in these uh, still the United States of America, war is still going on. So we need praying, need to pray for the safety of uh, all of our service men and women and and our uh, government officials, leaders who are making decisions uh, for um, uh, we here in America. So we want to pray for all of those uh, those families and certainly all those who are connected. Let us pray, eternal and all wise God, our Father. We come this day. To, we come, the Father, to say thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. We owe you so much. You're such a gracious and such a kind Father. And we find ourselves once again at the, at the seat of mercy, asking that I would just have mercy on us right now. Lord, we pray now for mankind everywhere. Lord, and we pray that you meet the needs according to your riches and glory. Bless those who are going through seasons or sickness, or whatever the disease that got them out of dis-ease. God, we pray for healing right now. Strengthen only you can do. God, we're praying for bereaved family. We're praying, God, for those who are less fortunate than we are. God, we're just praying as we humble ourselves at your mighty hands. Oh, God, just continue to have your way. Bless us now in the, the blessing that we all stand in need of. And, Father, we're going to give you all the glory and the praise. We ask you come now in the person of the Holy Spirit. Uh, touch our spiritual ears that we can be able to hear, our eyes that we can see, our hearts that we can accept what you have to say to us on this day. We ask now you let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are our rock and you are our redeemer. In Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. Now what we're going to do quickly on today, we're going to wrap up what we've been dealing with the last several weeks. Uh, five things that I want to do uh, in this new year. Five things that I want to do. And we've been dealing out of Philippians chapter 4, uh, verse 6. And four of the things that I want to do, we dealt with, I want to stop worrying. That's the first thing. That's, that, that's, that's in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. The second thing that I want to do, I want to start praying. I want to start praying. The third thing that we talked about is that I want to start asking. I want to be pacific. I, I, want, I want to be direct when it comes down to me talking to the Lord. I want to, I want, I want to, I want to ask him. I want, I want to ask him. And then last week is that we dealt with is that I want to start thanking him. I can't, I think, think about him without thanking him. So, so I want, I want to do that every, every, every moment, every opportunity that presents itself is that I want to thank him. Never get to a point in your life, I don't care what the situation may be, never have a spirit of ungratefulness or being ungratefulness. Always be thankful because of the fact that you still got your health and your strength. You're still in your right mind. You may not have all the mobility, but uh, the Lord still always shall all good to us. So thank him. And so the, finally, I want to uh, 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 
uh, make it uh, a habit of this, of this year is going to be in verse number 7. Uh, and look at verse number 7 of that fourth chapter of Philippians. And, and uh, is that uh, I like how the New Living Translation says, he said, then you will experience God's peace. When, when, when I stop worrying, <clears throat> when I start praying, let, let, let's line it up together. It's, all this connects. When I start asking, when I start thinking, this is what's going to happen, is that I'm going to experience God's peace. Yeah, which, which exceeds anything we can understand. Look at verse 7. It says, his peace will guard your hearts in mind as you live in Christ Jesus. So the fifth, I want to do what I'm going to do, Pastor, is that I'm going to walk in God's peace. Yeah, I, I'm going to walk. Say that. Say that. I'm going to walk in God's peace. That, that's what I'm going to That's what I'm going to do is that I want to experience the peace of God. And let me tell you, you don't have to try to experience his peace. It will come automatically. It will come automatically. It's not the kind of peace that the world uh, gives. It's not, that's, that's, this is a different types of peace. Is, is that, is that, is that it got nothing to do with your position uh, in life. Is that, that you will have that peace even in the midst of adversity. Even in the midst when storms are raging, is that you still got that peace. And so, and so, because we understand there's a difference in world peace, because world peace depends upon what? Uh, you know, you know, it depends on circumstances. But God's peace depends on what? And I want you to write this down. God's peace depends on his presence. Are you listening to me? Is that as long as you got the presence of God, is that it's regardless of what you and I have to face and go through, is that we can still have assurance that we got this thing under control. The peace of God is not based on what is happening, but it's based on what? On us trusting God. On trust in God, and when you and when you study when you study the Bible, is that especially if you study it closely, is that you see that word uh, peace at least a uh, four hundred and twenty nine times in the Bible, and and so and so and so when when, when you kind of uh, uh, look at all the uh, six, they say there's at least six bases emotional uh, that everything that that flows within us as human. That, uh, that 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 is a that is a automatically uh, a mechanism that 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 uh, may want to uh, say is an, an endowment that um, that God has given us. You got you got fear, you got angry, you got sadness, you got joy, you got love and peace. Let me say it again: that that there are at least six basis emotions. That everything flows from. I don't care who you are, don't care how strong a man or woman you think you are, is that we, we have to deal with fear, we have to deal with angry, we have to deal with sadness, we have to deal with joy, we have to deal with love, and then we have to have that uh, endowment called peace. And, and, and you know anything about peace is that, is that, uh, uh, is that you got to be able to distinguish between worldly peace, a corner peace, and the peace of God. And so, so, you, so when, you, when we kind of look at uh, peace as far as uh, harmony and being calm, being content, uh, when you think about peace, uh, even right now, um, uh, uh, you said there's, that there's no conflict, no war going on, and it, it, things are quiet, and you're you know, you're having a, a season of tranquility. Uh, when you say peace, is that you, you, you don't have to uh, deal with disturbance, no strife, no persecution, no drama, no chaos. Is, is that, is that um, at all dealing with peace? And, 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 so, and, so, and so keep in mind is that if we're going to be able to uh, uh, deal with uh, uh, everyday uh, situation 
is that we got to rest and trust that God is with us. We got to do that. We got to do that. Uh, 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 is, it, is, is it possible, um, uh, uh, according to Scripture, uh, is, is, it, is, is, it, is it possible for uh, each believer to have perfect peace? Yes. <clears throat> Isaiah 26 and 3 tells us that. Isaiah 26 and 3. That will keep him, that will keep her in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on what? On thee. Yeah, so, so, so it's, 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 it's actually uh, uh, available because it is a gift. It is a gift that God gives us. It, it's that uh, peace honors the plan that God has for. Read Isaiah 6 and 8. Read it when you get a chance. Read it when you get a chance. Uh, yeah, yeah, all, all of that uh, is something that God wants us to experience. He wants us to experience real peace. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12 uh, tells us is that nothing in this life will trouble you anymore when you uh, get to a point on your Christian journey that uh, you would line up when you're seated in the divine peace of God. Read 2 Timothy. I dare you to read 2 Timothy 1 and 12. I, I double dare you to read it. Uh, you, 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 you'll be surprised how the word of God will settle into your spirit, settle into your heart, and that will give you, uh, <clears throat> that will give you a peace that surpasses understanding. Peace can be a divine gift. Yeah, it can be, it can be a divine gift. It, it was, it, 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 it will be so, uh, you can be in a state of so peacefulness is that regardless of what's going on around you, is that you're still calm. Uh, that, 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 that's what Jesus had to uh, tell his disciples before he, uh, he got ready to go to the cross in that 14th chapter of St. John. Even after he gave them some disturbing news in that 13th chapter of John about him uh, being portrayed and how he's going to be, be denied by some of his close friends. And then you know, how all of his disciples was going to, um, uh, to desert him uh, at, at a moment that he really needed that support. So he's telling them, giving them some disturbing news that he was going to have to leave them. But in that 14th chapter, he said, let not your heart be troubled. And then you keep on reading on down. He said, he said, the peace that I give, I'm going to give you peace that surpasses all understanding. So, so, so Pastor, uh, let, let, me, let me just... Uh, uh, conclude by telling you how do I know how do I know that I have arrived on my Christian journey when I know that I have this peace that I can walk in the peace of God in spite of what um, is going on let, let me share with you quickly this this is how you know is when you start praying like this when, when, when your prayer lines in somewhat may not be exactly in the words of what I'm finna say, but this is this is this, this this is how you got to a point on your Christian journey that you got this peace. You said, God, I don't know how I got here. God, I don't know what is going on. Be honest with God. God, I don't know what is going to happen. God, I don't understand this situation. You're talking to God. You ain't talking to nobody, but this is you and God talking. God, I don't know how to get out of this mess that I'm in. God, my feelings, my mind, and my emotion are playing games in my head, and I don't know what to do to stop this. God, I don't see a way out of this. I just don't know what to do. I don't know what will happen to my family and my friends. Please, God, I don't know in a solution that can fix, fix this mess. God, I don't know. But God, I do know I can trust you. Did you get it? Just be honest. God, I don't know. But God, I trust you. I trust you. That's, 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 that's when you arrive at having that peace. And so, in my conclusion, I want to challenge us to commit ourselves not to worry as much as we did in the years 
pass. But let us trust God completely. Because yes, there's going to be some moments when we fail to come up to the expectation that God has for us. And so we need to make it a habit that you, I'm going to walk in God's peace. Let us pray. Grace of God, we thank you again for your word. We thank you for reminding us that we can receive your gift of peace if we just uh, rely, if we get in your word and trust you. Thank you for never leaving us. Thank you for never forsaking us. Lord, we are weak, but we know you are strong. Lord, we have so much to wrestle with. But God, we know that you's in control. Please, sir, don't turn a deaf ear on us. Please don't, please don't, Father. Incline attentively ear to us. Thank you for all things. We bless you now. Continue to allow us to have a closer walk with you. And God, we're going to give you all the praise and the glory. In your sweet son Jesus' name, we ask it all. Amen.